Today's video is brought to you by Raycon Earbuds. Now starting at about half the price of other premium brands, but sounding just as good, the Everyday E25s is what I'm using. Lately I've been listening to a lot of music, maybe a little bit of podcast action, and having the ability to hear within my own confines without annoying my neighbors or the people around me is pretty important. Now the everyday E25s that I use come with around six hours of battery life. They have a really good set of bass to it. Seamless Bluetooth integration. I know, I know what it's like to mess around with the options menu too much. But most importantly, they come with my noise isolation dream. And boy, is the noise isolation great. Because while there are individuals out there that like to ruin my good time, I don't have to hear them anymore. I can't hear you! If you want to experience the noise isolation with me, go check out buyraycon.com slash someordinarygamer for 15% off. To think that poor shaming brought us this entire series, ladies and gentlemen. Now I'm gonna finally finish off my Frankenstein Billy PC video. I feel kind of like a proud dad. Like I'm just finishing off what is my dream build because it really is, okay? The Billy build is my dream build and I'm finally glad to end this series off with a bang. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you know, I, I watched the last video we made and it did pretty well in my opinion, considering the fact that it was a full technical nerd out. And now we're getting into the real meat and potatoes. Today's video might actually be a little illegal. It might actually be, well, it's definitely piracy. It's definitely uh, breaking the end user license agreement. So again, if you feel that you're not morally ready to handle this then you can just step away do something else it is what it is but ladies and gentlemen i'm going to install macintosh on my billy system and i'm going to do it in such a way that i think it's the definitive apex way to do this kind of stuff now what we're doing here is basically on par with hackintoshes you know a lot of people who natively hack the um the mac os uh, uh system onto uh, uncertified hardware so to speak and I usually have had a, a variety of success and a variety of failure with that method, right? Like I used to build Hackintoshes and you gotta be real specific with what you're getting in, so to speak. But this method is one of the best ones out there. Now, you may have watched Linus's video about, oh, run Mac OS on any system. Listen, I'm not saying that Linus is wrong, but uh, that video, the title is a little inaccurate. Now, we're gonna run the most recent version of Mac OS. Now, this video is basically requiring you to at least do the first part of the Billy system. So as long as you have a functioning Windows gaming system available, like a VM that we just built last time, you're good to go here. Now, the requirements for this involve that you use Linux, and I would recommend using a version of Linux that's not as bloaty. Now, I know that I've been saying Arch Linux is like bloatless as hell, and that's a little inaccurate. You know, if you talk to package maintainers for Arch and Manjaro, uh, it does have an element of bloat package by package, but let, let me be real, okay? Unless you want to start building Linux from fucking scratch, or you want to go all the way to the Gen 2 side, which if you're using Gen 2, you probably don't need this video anyways. This is like easy mode for you. So Arch is kind of the compromise that we're using over here. Guys, it's really not as, as intense as you, as you make it out to be. But that being said, ladies and gentlemen, it is what it is. If you want to go out of your way to make a headless system, uh, go do that if you need to. But for our reasons, it'll work just fine. Now you're gonna to wanna to have an AMD graphic card. If you have an Nvidia graphic card, go home, pool's closed, you're not getting any far, Apple just goat seed your entire uh, uh, wish, okay? Apple and Nvidia, they don't get along, okay? They don't even share the same bed, dude. They don't even look at each other when they're doing it. AMD and Apple, oh dude, that's like bedfellows. AMD and Intel GPUs, ah, sometimes they get along, sometimes they don't, okay? It depends on how they're feeling any given day of the week. But you're gonna to wanna to have an AMD GPU. I bought myself a cheapo 5500 XT and called it a day. If you want to pass a Radeon 7, hey, you can if you want to, okay? It just is what it is. These are the basic requirements that you need. Now, we're going to be following a guide by the people over at Pass Through Post. Uh, it's a pretty easy guide, but, you know, it does require basic knowledge of Linux, as they say, uh, which is pretty much as true as we're going to get. But ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the meat and potatoes and get this going. Now we're gonna to need to be doing some prerequisite installs. So if you have an Arch-based Linux, which we used Manjaro last time, so you have an Arch Linux, Arch-based system. Red Hat or Fedora uses this line or Debian uses this line. You can usually tell the difference between these bases by just what package manager they use. So Arch-based uses the Pac-Man package manager, Red Hat uses Yum, uh, Red Hat, Fedora, CentOS, whatever, Debian, Ubuntu, or 
any of their likewise variants use apt-get. Uh, Gen 2 uses portage or portage, whatever you want to get to. So open up a terminal and copy the command line that's appropriate to you. Okay, so just highlight that, copy, and uh, just paste that into your, uh, into your terminal. Hit enter, enter your root password, and it'll actually ask you to reinstall some things or not. Usually if you've done the last video, it'll ask you to reinstall QEMU. Uh, if you don't need to install anything, don't do it. I mean, it doesn't really hurt if you do it either. So you can hit yes, let it go through all of its stuff, and bam, you have the prerequisite ready. The next step is to get the Python scripts and applications installed too. So using PIP, which is the Python script and software package manager, do pip install click request, all right? This is gonna install click and request. I'm not gonna do it because I've already installed it. It already said that I installed it, but now that you've done it, you're good. So it's here at this point, you're going to need to have a directory for your uh, Mac VM. So where are you going to store the files? If you open up a terminal anytime, it'll default to your home directory, which is okay if you want to keep it there. But I'm going to go to my M2 SSD and I'm just going to make a Mac VM folder. So right over here, I've got my M2 SSD and Mac VM. Try not to have spaces in there. It's not that you can't. Uh, it's just you do need to add some uh, different syntaxes when you're working on this um, when you're when you're when you're editing XML files. So just don't do any capitals. Okay? Don't do any, don't do any spaces. Just don't bother. Just do Mac VM, enter it, and have a blank folder. Now over here, you want to do right click and open terminal here. All right. Uh, if you know how to navigate this just using terminal commands, do that if you feel like it. I'm giving you sort of a graphic user interface style of doing it just uh, to make things a little easier. Now here you're going to clone the Mac OS simple KVM git repository, right? So this, is, this isn't the only way to do it. There's other git repositories out there. This is just a super simple one that's available. So just copy this git clone uh, uh, line and paste it in here. And it's going to just clone that git repository real quick. So in your Mac VM folder, you now have a Mac OS dash simple dash KVM. And here you're going to want to CD into it. So just, you know, uh, navigate into that folder. So you do CD, Mac OS simple KVM, and you'll move into that folder. And over here you want to do dot slash jumpstart dot sh, which is the jumpstart script. Now here you can do dash dash like high Sierra or whatever other variant of Mac you want. If you just launch this, it'll download the recent version of Mac OS. As of this date, it's Catalina. So just hit enter and it's gonna do a whole bunch of lines and it's gonna check for networks and it's gonna download the base system.dmg, which is the OS recovery for Mac OS, which is what we're gonna be using to create our Mac system. So let it download as you take like a minute or two, depending on your internet connection, and you should be ready to go. Now, once you've got that downloaded, let's make our hard drive. This is gonna be an image that we're gonna be using to install the Mac OS 2. If you don't have a hard drive, you ain't getting further than the steps. So let's get this started. So type in QEMU dash image. As you can see, I've already typed it before, but I'm gonna type it just, you know, for, for sake here. So QEMU create dash F QCOW 2 and my disk. Again, this could be anything you want, but we're gonna call it my disk dot q cow 2 and then 64 g now 64 g is how many gigabytes this is going to be uh, if you want to make a 200 you can just do 200 g you can do 500 g uh, you can do as much as you want as long as you have that amount of space in your uh, the drive that you're creating this file in uh, if it decides to ever one day go over the amount of storage you have it'll actually crash the vm right there it'll halt the entire process but you do want 64 gigs as a baseline for this. So do 64G and hit enter. Once that's done, it creates the QCOW2 image and you're pretty much almost good to go. So close this terminal real quick and open up this folder. Inside this folder over here, you'll notice that here's your mydisk.qcow2 image. What you're trying to find is the basic.sh. So open that up with Kate and you have to change a couple things over here to make it total, totally compatible for you. Here, you wanna actually add these specific lines real quick, right at the end of this XML file. And these lines are actually on the guide at path through post, but I'll show you. It's drive ID equals system disk, if none, file my disk.q2. And then drive IDE dash HD and whatnot. What you wanna change over here though, is where it says file equals my disk.qcow2, that you want to actually change to a file path. 
So by going to back to your file manager, up here at the address bar, you can just highlight this and copy all of it. So where it's like MNT slash blah, 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 slash Mac VM slash Mac OS simple KVM, you're gonna to wanna to copy this and go into the actual Kate browser here real quick, the Kate uh, text editor, and just copy that in there and make sure that it makes sense visually. So mount, blah, 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 and it leads to the mydisk.qcow2 image. At this point, you can also go up over here and change things like the amount of memory you wanna pass. So I'm gonna give it like 16 gigs of memory. And in machine or SMP4 core two, you can actually change how many cores you're passing to the system. You don't necessarily really need to do this right now, but if you want to, you can, and I'll show you real quickly of how, how you can change it. So with M, you can do 16 gigs, and just where it says SMP4 core two, you can do dash SMP, CPUs, very important that you make sure it matches the syntax, equals, and since I know I have 16 threads in my system, I'm comfortable passing all 16 over as virtual CPU, so I'm gonna do 16 dash cores equal 16, and then you wanna do threads equal one, and then sockets equal one. Now, as far as the sockets go, you may have to change that. Uh, uh, you may have to add one for every eight threads or cores you pass through. Cores in this case, I'm not so sure, but I think cores are like every two threads. So roughly, I think every 16 threads you pass, you're probably gonna wanna add a socket. And I guess that's how it is. Again, you can change some of this stuff later, but you can choose to modify it right now just for the installation phase so it goes through a lot quicker. Now end this off with a little uh, slash, just so you can finish off this file. Hit Control S, make sure everything's saved, and it's almost time to go. Last but not least, there is a MAC address issue. Um, this is a generic MAC address that they've given in the system. You can actually make one real quickly by going to the guide and copying this open SSL like uh, terminal line that they have. So I'll show you what it does real quick. Uh, basically by copying this line in particular, open SSL random hex six SED, entering that will just generate you a new MAC address. You can do it like a million times and get like a different address each time. So we'll just pick E001, whatever it is, and we're just gonna copy that into Kate real quick. So right here, we just copied E0016584887, whatever. So now we've got a new MAC address. Everything is pretty much done. Now at this point, we can actually launch this basic script and we should see our Mac system boot up. So if you do dot slash basic dot sh, hopefully right there, you've got the QEMU screen. So congratulations, you've done basically the first hard part. Now it's time to just set the system up. So again, over here, you're gonna wanna go through the basic steps and I'll guide you through it real quick. So we'll let the system boot up, gonna take a little minute or two, let's, uh, let's, let's just wait on it. Okay, so once you get to this menu, this is sort of the recovery era, recovery stage of Mac systems. Now what you wanna do is you wanna go to disk utility and hit continue. And it's gonna load up all the disks that it detects. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna flip through these options and try to find where your, uh, where your drive that you made, the my disk drive, exists. So since we made a 64 gig drive, Apple's reading it as a 68 gig drive. Again, there's gonna be some discrepancies, but that's the one that we made, right? So over here, you're gonna hit erase on that drive and you're gonna title it whatever you want. So you can type it like butt plug for all I care, right? Like if you just wanna give it a little hot action, steamy, you know, butt play. Uh, enable that, <laughs> and you wanna go and click APFS, which is Apple's proprietary file system. I think you can use anything else, but APFS is what the newer Mac OS systems use. Make sure it's GUID partition map, all right? Just, just leave it at that. Hit erase, and finally, if all else, if it works, it just generates it within a minute, and you now have a, uh, a drive that Mac can recognize. So close disk utility, and here you can hit reinstall Mac OS. And now, hopefully, let's just look at it. It says Mac OS Catalina, newest version. Hit continue, all right? Hopefully, we get to that terms of services. Now, here we're about to, we're about to break that terms of service right now. Are you ready? Hit that agree button. Okay, you see that? You see that big button right there? Three, two, one. Woohoo! We just broke it. We just violated it. Ugh. Now, you wanna find that drive you made. So here I got butt plug. You wanna hit that little butt plug real quick and you wanna just install to your butt plug and hit <laughs> install and butt plug 23 minutes remaining. Oh, that's a tight one. Oh, 12 minutes? It's spicy. Now what this is doing, it's downloading macOS from the uh, from the Apple servers out there and getting the butt plug ready for it. So 
now that I've sufficiently had my fun with that word, uh, we're going to come back. It's going to take a little bit of while, so I don't know, go, go for a walk. You know, do a push, do some push-ups, uh, have a beer, I don't care, you know. I'm gonna walk away and we'll be back in like uh, 11 minutes. <laughs> all right, dude, it's ready to go. Finally installed, we're all good. Now we gotta actually boot into our Mac system, it's all good. Now over here you got like four options. Uh, you're gonna wanna find the one where it says boot Mac OS from whatever drive name. So I named it Butt Plug, so it's gonna be called boot Mac OS from Butt Plug. We're gonna hit enter, and now it's gonna start booting into the system, okay? So you're gonna get a whole bunch of stuff thrown at you. It's because it's the verbose boot, meaning that it's just gonna tell you everything. Uh, good to really pick out errors if they occur right now, but we're gonna wait. Okay, it's probably gonna take a couple minutes first time to boot up, really. Uh, usually that's the case. Again, if you have like an SSD passed, it usually hastens the whole deal over, but we'll just wait for it to boot real quick. All right, dude, here we go. It's booting up. We got the little gray screen. Now here we got to set up the Mac real quick. Okay, just like you would set up a regular Mac if you bought it straight from the store. Uh, what country am I from? Well, let me just figure it out real quick. I'm not from Afghanistan. I ain't from Angola. Oh, that's right. I'm from Canada land. All right, so we're going to find Canada in here again. If you want to say you live in uh, Cape Verde, you, you can type it in or Burundi. I don't really care. Okay, just j if you want to lie about it, do it. I mean, you can lie. You, you can lie to Apple. I don't really care. Hit continue. Yes. Data and privacy. Yes. Do not transfer any information. Yes. Sign in with your Apple ID. You can do this, but there's a couple steps you have to take before you even touch this. Otherwise, you may risk a soft bit temporary ban. But hit set up later. We don't have to worry about it. Yes, I would like to skip it. Terms and condition. Are you ready to break more? You ready? Okay, we're gonna hit. To, we're gonna hit it together. Three, two, one. Yeah, fuck you, Apple. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Now here you're gonna type in. Uh, you're gonna give it a name. So I'm gonna call it uh, Bob. All right, Bob the Bob PC. And we're gonna give it a super easy password. It's one, two, three, four, by the way. You can change the profile picture if you want. Um, I'm gonna go with a cute little yingy. Oh, I'm gonna go with the gingerbread guy, okay? Cause fuck it, why not? Uh, and hit continue, let it create the account. Oh, express setup, yeah, dude. Share my data, no, <laughs> no, continue. Uh, screen time, Siri, uh, usually if you want to enable her, you can, but I'm going to tell that hoe to go fuck herself and go continue and not enable her. Yes, come on now, come on, baby boy, come on, continue, continue, continue. Man, it take, takes a while. Here you get to pick what you want. You want it light, you want it dark, you want it auto. I think I want it a little dark, my boys. Hit continue. Oh, there we go. Finally, we're at the end. Jesus Christ. And would you look at that? We're on our Mac system. Now, it's incredibly slow but uh, it's gonna be like that because it only has like three megabytes of graphic memory. In fact, going to the about section, butt plug only has three mechs to work with. But we're gonna fix that because we're gonna give it an actual graphic card and call it a day. Now, you need to import this to your vert manager, okay? Remember that tool we used to launch our Windows VM with? Now, so far over here, we've done everything with a command line. What we need to do is finally enable this tool to run in our actual GUI. So what you wanna do is you wanna to go to the example OS expert manager. This is by the path through post people again, and I'll leave a link to this GitHub in the description. So you have OSX XML, readme, example, config, plist. You wanna just click this clone or download button and download the zip file. And once you download the zip file, what you need to do is you need to find where it is, where it says osx.xml and just drag that into your uh, Mac OS simple KVM folder. Now, of course, it's not entirely gravy here yet. You need to modify this so you can actually import it appropriately. So open that up in Kate, and you wanna find out where it says the words your path, right? So what you need to do is you need to go back to your file browser and where you need to get the address once more. So where it's a Mac OS simple KVM, just highlight this and copy this address wholesale. Now in Kate, the cool thing that you can do is you can go to edit, and do replace, control R, and here you're gonna type in your path, and you're gonna just paste that directory. Now here you wanna just get rid of these slashes at the end so it pastes appropriately. And just do replace, 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 and until you can't replace anymore. Once that's done, hit control save, close this out, and then you wanna just ingest this into your system. So just open another terminal here in this location and finally do sudo versh define like so and then you want to do osx.xml. All right, 
If that's done, enter your password. You should now define this and it should just show up in your VM right here, your, uh, your vert manager window. Again, you wanna make sure that everything just works out real fine. For example, when I copied, it actually showed that I registered macOS simple KVM twice. So you wanna again fix that up because that's not a proper directory to begin with. So I'm just gonna get rid of those. Again, this requires you to just make sure that everything uh, is kosher. Otherwise it just won't work, okay? So just make sure everything works out fine. All right, I'm gonna fix it up. Just look it over once or twice. Make sure that the directory matches where it's supposed to go. If it doesn't, none of this is gonna work, all right? It's just not gonna import properly. So again, close this and let's ingest this the right way. So. Open up a terminal, add this location, and you want to type in sudo versh define osx.xml. And eventually it'll just say domain osx defined, you're good. Now you can open up your vert manager and it'll just show up here real quick. So let me just sign in. And here it is, osx, and it's shut off. So open that up and it's time for us to get into the final stage of the, of the pie. So you can change this to what you want. I'll call it butt plug just to make sure that it you know, matches, the, uh, matches the aesthetic we're going for. Now in the CPU territory, uh, I want you to just match your CPU exactly the way that it is. So go down to cores, do like, uh, give, it, give it like, I guess, uh, eight cores, two threads each, all right, not 21 threads. Uh, at least that's for me. Again, your topology may be different, so just copy your CPU again. Do it the same way you did the Windows VM anyways. And here you want to pass uh, 16 cores to begin with. And I think you can do a uh, copy host CPU configuration. Not entirely sure on that. Uh, I'm going to try it. If it doesn't work, we'll go back to this. Uh, in memory, uh, give it like 16 gigs. Uh, I'm going to give it that. Again, give it as much as you personally feel like you want to give it. Uh, if you want, I can't pass all this if I, if, I, if I try, I mean, Jesus Christ. Couple changes to make once it's defined. So again, we've got the name changed, aesthetic butt plug OSX, solid. Uh, CPUs, you may need to go in here and change topology. So I copied CPU host configuration, one socket, eight cores, two threads. How my i9 is passing 16 threads, all of it to the system. Uh, I've been told that this might screw up the system, but generally I did it this way and it worked out just fine. Go to memory, change it to however much you want. I'm giving it a full fat 16 gigs. If you want to give it more, I mean, go for it. Let it let it eat up whatever it wants. Remember, unused RAM is bad RAM in my opinion. So go down over here and uh, here you can change the MAC address if you truly want to, you know, if you, if you really feel that you're inclined. Uh, just by going in, uh, I believe when we changed it last time, it didn't register because when we redefined it with the OS, um, with the actual uh, with the actual OSX.xml, it just reverted back to whatever they wanted. So again, you can generate a new one right here, uh, and then go around real quick. Get rid of Display Spice, Sound IC, H9, and Video QXL. Uh, we're going to be passing a GPU to this bad boy. One thing to note, make sure you have a keyboard and mouse just so that you can actually access the system. Again, you can work with things like FDev, Synergy, Share Mouse, whatever tool you use later. But for the first couple times, you may need to pass through an actual uh, uh, keyboard and mouse. Again, nothing too fancy. Just make sure that it works, gets the job done. Here in USB, I've generally had trouble. Give it USB 2 just for the input for now. Add hardware. So you wanna add your USB devices. So you wanna add like uh, your, your keyboard. You wanna add your mouse. And finally, you wanna add your GPU. So go to your PCI host device, add the GPU that you use for the Windows VM anyways. It may give you an error and say other guests use it. Don't worry about it. It's only gonna be an issue if you say try launching both at the same time which I don't think you're gonna do. So again, pass through everything related to the graphic card, all pieces of it, whether it has a USB or if it doesn't, just pass through all of it uh, like we did before. And now that you're finally done here, it's time to launch this bad boy. So if all else works, okay, we can just close this off, uh, right click butt plug and hit run. And it should just actually pass the words and it should just say running. So where is it? Well, let's switch to the input of that GPU. Okay, so it showed up on the wrong monitor over here, but as long as you're seeing it, you're good. So it actually showed that I have the system. It's using the full resolution of the ultra wide. Now you wanna boot from your butt plug. Again, you can change this later so it auto boots, but just highlight your system to boot off of, and it should give you this. 
Um, usually on ultra wide monitors, to my knowledge, it screws up on the top, but if you have a 16 by nine monitor, four by three, this will work. Usually this is a property of people that have out their uh, aspect ratio. So firing it up, we're waiting for it to register. Hopefully if, if, all is success, if all is successful, it boots into the system and here it is. So here we've got a Mac system finally ready to go. Bob is a functional system. So sign in using our super secret password, one, two, three, four. And if it works, here we go, we've got it. So continue, yeah, yeah, this is my uh, keyboard mouse, you're good. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the money. Let me just change the actual display real quick about this Mac. So bam, bam, we actually have a fully functional Mac right now. So you can actually go to the Apple website right here. And as you can see, it works really flawlessly on the system. Since we passed a graphic card to it, it can finally use my CPU and my GPU. And if I actually open up the activity manager on a Macintosh right here, you can actually see that I do in fact have 16 threads being passed to it. By opening up the CPU usage, this little uh, indicator right here if you can see it real quick, this is 16 threads being passed. Now, if you had a 128 core rise, 128 thread Ryzen processor, you could pass all those bad boys and bam, you have a better Mac than whatever Apple can sell you. So screw these guys, close this crap to your system and bam, you now have a fully functional Mac. As you can see, everything just like sort of fires up really, really fast. So bam, you can, you can do whatever it is to your heart's content. So if you wanted to open up like mail, for instance, or you want it to open up calendars right here. You can just go through the whole gauntlet and this thing does not skip a beat. You could even buy and download games and game on this system provided, you know, your graphic card can handle some games, all right? If you're trying to play something really recent, uh, you're probably gonna want one of those Radeon 7s. But yeah, dude, look at that, it works. Stop the video now. Ho oh, ho, you see this? You see, you see this, ladies and gentlemen? Mm -hmm. Let's hit that play. Make sure it's viewed partition map. That, that, this video was edited entirely on this Mac. Now I wanted to give it about two months of my time before I made this video public, because I know that if I was to release this video uh, like a week or two after I covered the Billy video, there would have been a lot of criticism saying, oh Muda, but what if your system crashes? It only worked for like a week or two. No, I've been using this setup for about two months now and it's been as effectively good as an actual Macintosh. Now, to start off with, I actually did end up buying a Mac mini just for this system. Uh, particularly to build the installation disks. And this is, system is a pile of crap, by the way. Um, it's one of the cheaper Mac OS offerings, but yeah, anyways, I, I gave Apple my money technically, and now I can throw this pile of crap away because I've got a stronger Mac system. Oh my God, that thing is dusty. <laughs> Woo but with all of this said, you know, I gave about two months to use this system because honestly, I wanted to see if, if it was going to be worth it, if I could actually pass it on to you. Now, the reason I prefer this method over the traditional Hackintosh is it just works. Like I've done this across three builds already and it works flawlessly because you're usually just spoofing the system anyways. The only actual bit of hardware that Mac reads is the graphic card, which in this rig now, I've actually installed a Radeon 7. So I have just the better aims of graphical performance on this whole virtual machine as a whole and across any other VM I pass that uh, car to. With all of that said though, all right, I've been video editing on this for two months and it makes me wonder something. The fastest system that you can get from Apple right now is in my opinion, pretty outdated. Given how certain processors exist with 128 threads, even though yes, they are a thousand, two thousand dollars, there are graphic cards that rival whatever Apple is pushing in its high-end Mac Pros and the amount of RAM you can buy, which is comparably priced, it makes me look at the actual price of this system, a high-end workstation, and I still paid a fraction less than whatever Apple's charging for their like baseline Mac Pros. And my system runs faster. It runs smoother. There is absolutely minimal loss of performance when it comes to rendering these videos. Maybe in a very specific case, I'd see some actual differences, but I haven't really encountered the need to go into those specific cases. And I doubt a grand majority of the people will either. With that said though, all right, it makes me understand one thing, okay? As somebody who pitches Apple, right? If you wanna go behind them and, and you wanna use their uh, hardware for your video editing, your programming, these really high-end cases, why is it not ideal for Apple to be selling the highest, highest end of the time? And I understand from you know, a logistics standpoint and I understand that Apple, you know, they, 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 they can't just, you know, just stick in the highest end parts without testing it thoroughly themselves. But then it brings me down to this point. 
Macintosh is not the problem. Mac OS is great. I actually have been liking editing on this and doing some programming on the side. It's a decent operating system, but it's actually hampered by Apple's hardware and engineering choices. You know, Apple will sell you computers where they give you nice processors, but because they don't want the audience to hear the fans, they thermal throttle the crap out of them, or they at least engineer them in a way where you're only using half of it anyways. You know, I watch a bunch of Lewis Rossman videos and he talks about right to repair. And when Apple really screws up the repair process for its vendors, this system makes me happy because it's a Mac that if I have an issue, I can repair within an hour or two if I wanted to myself. So yeah, I, I, I realize using a Macintosh like this, I actually lose the Apple headache for like two months. I don't have to really get in touch with them. And granted, if something breaks here, I can't even contact Apple because what I'm doing is technically breaking their EULA anyways. With all of it said though, I don't actually recommend this just because of legal reasons. I feel like if you wanna use an Apple computer and, and just morally, if you wanna get into it, use their Apple systems, use their hardware, use their hardware to run their software. But this video, at least to me, is a nice educational case where it shows you that their system is actually hampered by them themselves. You know, why is it that this system runs really well with 128 thread processors, runs really well with good GPUs? Why is it that Apple decides, hey, maybe it's time to hamper people with, with, our, with our overpriced hardware, when really our software can do a lot more? I'd actually be willing to buy Mac OS separately from Apple and run it on PCs themselves. I know that may be heresy and it'll never happen, but honestly, it's kind of happening in this janky setup or whatever you want to call it right now. And it works better, in my opinion, than just going to Apple themselves. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think about it. This is the conclusion of the Billy series, where Billy now can run Linux, well, all the time, and Windows and Mac and realize, you know what? I can switch between all of them whenever I want. No dual booting, no restarting, permanent uptime. That being said though, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it. If you dislike it, I am out. <laughs>